It's mock draft season, and this is the place to be. What's up, everybody? Welcome into Mock Draft Live. Colleen Wolf with Daniel Jeremiah, Bucky Brooks. Last week, we had Bucky's mock draft. The week before, it was DJ's. Now you guys get to kick back and just critique someone else's. Yeah. Do you feel good about that? A lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Great. This is uh, this is our jam here. We like to be able to look at someone else's mock draft <laughs> and really dig in. A lot of judging is going to happen today because it is Lance Zerline's day here. His mock 3.0 out right now on NFL.com. So, Lance, is there anything that you would like to say before we get started? Yeah, first of all, that's because Bucky is a nice guy and rolls with the punches. DJ's a judgy person, so I bet he can't <laughs> wait to poke a stick at everything that I've got up on the board. But haters hate, and that's the way it is. And so I'm here on Mock Draft Live to defend myself and spread a little knowledge. That's all I'm trying to do. I could go into a dense forest and not have enough sticks to poke holes in this mock draft. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. The energy on the Let's show go. right now is absolutely perfect. Let's roll. The number one overall pick, Lance, you have the Panthers taking Bryce Young over CJ Stroud. I do, and it was a conversation with Daniel Jeremiah the other day, who I'm going to blame for this, um, when he mentioned, you know, that he liked Bryce Young there. And, you know, the more you think about it, wait a minute, Bryce Young's my top-rated quarterback on my own personal board. He's got three years of consistent production of tremendous poise. He's got mobility inside and outside the pocket. And when you really think about it, I mean, what are the boxes that C.J. Stroud have over – over uh, um, um, Bryce Young, it's just size and a little bit of accuracy, but Bryce is the better quarterback. Let's go with Bryce Young here at number one. Okay, so let's move to number two, and um, I'm assuming it's C.J. Stroud. Wait a second, is this a mistake? Oh. Um, Lance, really? So this is where the problems start in my hometown with Houston, Texas. <laughs> okay. um, I pass on C.J. Stroud. Look, I think there is something interesting here with David Mulgetta, the agent, being the agent for C.J. Stroud, also the agent for Deshaun Watson. We know how that ended up. Mulgetta is a great agent. But I, I wonder if that's going to cause a problem here for the Texans. We know the Texans like two quarterbacks, according to D'Amico Ryans, but we don't know which two those are. So who fits into Bobby Slowick's offense? Well, they have two first-round picks this year. They've got two next year. They've got draft capital. I'm going to take it. You know, I'm going between uh, Will Anderson and Tyree Wilson, and I'm going to go with Wilson, who I think has the traits that D'Amico Ryans and that defense will like even better. Okay, so I'm going to go out on a limb here and just guess that Tyree Wilson is the first Alaskan taken second overall in the draft. But you guys go ahead, do the research, dig in, let me know if I'm wrong. But Lance, why would the Texans pass on a quarterback here? Do you think they should do it or this is what you think will happen? Well, I don't, you know, I think they should draft Bryce Young, but that may be taken out of their hands if Bryce Young goes one. And so that's how my mock draft got messy. I tried to think like the Texans might think. And here's the problem. Do I think they should take C.J. Stroud? Yes, I would probably take C.J. Stroud in this spot. However, they do have enough draft capital to move up and get their hands on Richardson or on, uh, you know, Will Levis if they choose to. Or they could sit this out, go with Case Keenum and Davis Mills, mm -hmm. and then go after quarterback next year as well. So, you know, I think that the number two pick, I don't think it's as etched in stone where it's either – you know, it's either Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud. I just don't think that's etched in stone right now for the Houston Texans. I think it could be more wide open. Oh, D.J., what do you think about this? Well, it's interesting. I, look, they, they need defensive line help. That, that is absolutely the case. But I just think when you're trying to sell hope, quarterbacks are what do that. I think trotting out Case Keenum next year would not be a very popular move uh, in Lance's hometown there in Houston. But I do want to go and show you what I like about Tyree Wilson as a football player. And while – I've been saying for a while I think there's a chance he could end up leapfrogging Will Anderson from Alabama because the traits that he possesses. You see it here. He's tall. He's long. He can really close from the backside. He can set the edge on the front side. He never stops working as a pass rusher. If you look at a lot of the best pass rushers, it's not only the speed, the power. It's that maniacal effort that they play with. He plays that way. So I think there's more ahead of him. You think about a guy like Ziggy Ansah coming out of college who went high in the draft, who didn't have it all together when he entered the league, but you could see it happening. I see that with a guy like Tyree Wilson. He's a fantastic player. Uh, but I would be shocked, stunned, astonished if they don't take a quarterback at number two. Well, they, they have precedent. They, they did this years ago when Reggie Bush was coming out, and we all thought Reggie Bush was going to be the pick. 
and yet they took Mario Williams. And so maybe just maybe with this franchise, one that loves pass rushers, maybe they opt for a pass rush to just pick and they try and find their quarterback later in the draft. Okay, so this feels like very uh, D'Amico Ryan's kind of making his mark, go, taking what he had in San Francisco and maybe starting to build that in Houston. So I could see that. Let's go to three, though, because it's very similar to what DJ and Bucky both had in their draft, and it's Will Anderson to Arizona. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you. This pick may be interchangeable with wherever the trade comes. Like, I think teams would trade up in my particular scenario. I think you'd have to see teams looking for a trade up situation, but um, I'm, I didn't put one in here, but I do think Will Anderson is a guy who is going to be targeted by Arizona. It's a pick they need and whether they flipped with five and three with with maybe seven and three. I think Will Anderson is a guy who they are going to take a look at. It makes a lot of sense. OK, so CJ Stroud just hanging out and uh oh, look what happens yeah. here. We have a trade. Lance spicing things up with the Ravens sending Lamar Jackson for the fourth slot there where they take CJ Stroud. The Ravens do they send uh, they send Lamar Jackson to the Colts. Yeah, and basically this would mean the Colts would have to get a Lamar Jackson deal done in time before the draft, which would, you know, and I think it behooves the Ravens to try to do this so they could lock in on a number four pick. If that happens, it would be C.J. Stroud in this, in this scenario. If it doesn't happen, it would be C.J. Stroud if this scenario played out that way for the Colts. And the Colts might even flip-flop from four to three just to get that done and land their guy C.J. Stroud if he were available. But I'm going to go Ravens here. I'm going to say Lamar Jackson ends up a Colt. All right, so going back to 2018, the Colts have had a different starting quarterback every year since Andrew Luck's last season. So no matter what happens in this draft, they're going to have a new starter for the sixth straight year. And Lance thinks that new face is going to be Lamar Jackson. So Lance, why is this the most likely outcome for Lamar? Well, I think when you look at the teams willing to do this, I think the Colts are in a position where they need this to happen. I think uh, the Baltimore Ravens certainly would love to have the number four pick. That's a that's a high pick. Do you would you want that to happen after the draft, where the Colts have Lamar Jackson and they start winning games, and your and your first your two first round picks are not going to be as valuable? No. And so Lamar would you know you have to have a team who's got the ability to take the money and put that in escrow and be ready to absorb that salary cap. The Colts have that ability to do that as well. I just think there are a lot of things that play into Lamar Jackson to the Colts, and one of them is the market hasn't materialized, and yet the Colts are saying, hey, we would consider Lamar Jackson. So it makes sense, I think, for both parties. Yeah, they, uh, they've they had not a lot of action during free agency, and obviously they last season they only had four wins, and it, with the top two guys gone for the Colts, this seems like a perfect scenario for them to actually get a quarterback to solve their problems here. But DJ, what would Lamar look like with the Colts and Shane Steichen? I love it. I, I've been advocating for this, so I, I'm a big fan of this move for the Colts. When you look at his fit in there with Jonathan Taylor, I think that's going to be a nice combination. Think about having to defend those guys in the zone read game, as well as having some big physical wide receivers in Alec Pierce and Michael Pittman. That gives you a little more room for error. Lamar hasn't been the most pinpoint accurate passer, so I think the personnel matches him. And then, Buck, when you look at the landscape of the AFC and you look at who you got to run through to get mm -hmm. to a championship right now with all these young quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson gets you in that conversation. You got a fighting chance. Yeah, for the Colts, it puts you right back in the mix in terms of being a contender because now you have a quarterback. And DJ talked about the quarterback that you have to deal with in the AFC Pat Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen. Uh, we have Russell Wilson, who may come back and be a different player, Justin Herbert. And so, if you do not have a franchise quarterback, we talked about it on the podcast, you don't have a Hall of Fame caliber guy you need to upgrade that position and so Lamar Jackson would give the Colts a fighting chance to be able to compete at a high level in the AFC and we've seen what Shane Steichen has done with Jalen Hurts and mm -hmm. mobile quarterbacks in the past so that fit would be nice what about on the flip side of things CJ Stroud heading to the Ravens what is that fit like for you Lance in Baltimore well, I like it for a few reasons. Number one, I think he's game ready. I think you can step right in and start playing him early on if you want. And I'm not saying he would definitely win the job. But we know he'd be out on the field starting at some point during the season. With Richardson and with Levis, 
that's not necessarily a given that they're going to start out and, and, and really get significant time in the first year. The Ravens can still win and still win at a high level. But I think C.J. Stroud, if he get if he got the running game going, if they could get the running game going once again, I think Stroud would have a chance to succeed there fairly early on. And, and I think they're built from a veteran standpoint on that roster and a coaching standpoint. I think they're built to really um, uh, help transition C.J. Stroud into the NFL game. Yeah, I, I believe in the offensive line. They get some good pieces there. You've got the big tight end and Mark Andrews. You've got a collection of backs. I think it's a pretty good environment for a young rookie quarterback to walk into uh, there with the Baltimore Ravens buck. And I, I don't really have anything negative to say about this fit. No, the fit would be great because Todd Munkins coming from the college game, former offensive coordinator for the Georgia Bulldogs. He now takes over for the Baltimore Ravens. You have a young quarterback coming in. You would like to think that they would meet halfway, build an offense that really is around C.J. Stroud's talent as they're recreating this Baltimore Ravens offense as we know it. Oh, we're being too nice to Lance. I hate this. All right, I know, let's go. Keep I it know. moving. All right. All right. I got Give it time. So you know get. what? There is some time. Give There's time. plenty of okay. spots coming up, gang. Uh, let's take a step back, though. Look at Lance's top six here. Bryce Young at one. Then the Texans passing on a quarterback to take Tyree Wilson at two. Will Anderson goes third to Arizona. And the Ravens trade Lamar Jackson to the Colts and pick up C.J. Stroud at four. Then Jalen Carter and Devin Witherspoon go five and six. Still to come, the Texans said no to a quarterback at second overall, but Lance has another surprise for us. Find out which quarterback goes seventh in the spot that previously belonged to Vegas. A lot of trades. It's a cool mock, not a regular mock. How about this? We are under a month away from the draft. It kicks off Thursday, April 27th in primetime from Kansas City. Watch it all on NFL Network and NFL Plus. Find out where the future stars of the league will land, like Kentucky quarterback Will Levis. Levis fires, throws a dart, lets it go right on the money. Love the decision here by Will Levis. And Levis with the quarterback run. First down and more. Easiest touchdown for Will Levis. Will Levis is the pick at seven, but it's the Texans trading up from 12 to get their guy, Lance? Well, I don't know. I mean, it could be Anthony Richardson. It could be Will Levis. I don't know. I think one of those two would be the pick. I think one thing that's interesting is his offensive coordinator in 21 and 22, of course, 21 was his best year, was Liam Cohen, who had uh, coached in uh, with the Rams under uh, uh, under Kevin O'Connell. And of course, Kevin O'Connell came from the passing system over there with San Francisco, or at least under the tree, I should say, of McVay and that whole, you know, that whole group that runs that passing style. So I think that is one interesting little side note is that Will Levis may come into the Texans with a little better understanding of potentially terminology, uh, certainly the, the passing concept. So Will Levis does have talent. He's not my top three quarterback. I've got a lower grade on them but I'm trying to think like the Texans might and it wouldn't surprise me if the Texans like some of the makeup the toughness and the arm talent that Will Levis possesses okay so the Texans they get their guy um not at two but they end up getting him anyway what have you seen from him that you like show us yeah I will show you but first of all I can't imagine Lance's coffee order it's got to be the most complicated <laughs> coffee order just, I just triple venti black. something I do my mock drafts just give me coffee black Lance has got to put all these different sweeteners and anyway, long story all right, <laughs> right let's get to the tape here and I can show you what I like about Will Levis as a player because there is a lot there he's been oft critiqued through this process what you can't critique though is the skill set as a power thrower see him get his cleats in the ground the ball jumps out of his hand he can really drive it here he is off platform it's not always aligned perfectly which can impact some of his accuracy but shows you some of that special ability with that arm the toughness to hang in there he takes some vicious shots hanging in the pocket behind a Kentucky offensive line that was porous this year. The sack total went way up. Here's the athletic ability, the mobility. You hear the comparisons, you know, with Josh Allen as an athlete, that gives you a glimpse. You can imagine all those times we've seen Josh Hurdle guys. So all the athletic abilities there, the competitiveness, the toughness, unfortunately wasn't healthy this year, had a toe, had a shoulder, missing some offensive linemen, playing with two freshman receivers. Oof. A lot of issues with Will Levis, and that's why the play fell off a little bit this year. Yeah, you talk about a play falling off, but I think if you have the conversation with Will Levis in the top 10, you have to have the same conversation with Anthony Richardson 
When I think about Anthony Richardson, to me, Anthony Richardson is a more talented prospect when it comes to the athleticism, the explosive plays that he delivers. And while you can like Will Levis's ability to maybe do some of those Josh Allen things, the conversation in the room has to be about Anthony Richardson, Will Levis, who has more upside. Will Levis was the better collegiate player, but Anthony Richardson might be the better pro player based on his superior athletic traits. Okay, let's get into that debate a little bit more because we're going to skip ahead to 14 where another Ooh. quarterback who I can't imagine who it is comes off the board. Richardson fires one over the middle and strike. Richardson, he'll load it up and cut it loose with that big arm. Makes a tackle. and is dangerous in the open field. Another surprise. So Anthony Richardson goes to New England. It's Bill Belichick coming up to grab him. What about Mac Jones? I have so many questions, Lance. Listen, I'd like a double mint frappuccino, <laughs> soy, low fat, two Splendas, because here's how I get here on this one. Let's see. Bill Belichick and Mac Jones, supposedly there were some issues between the two of them. I think where there's smoke, there's fire. And if Bill Belichick is not on board with Mac Jones, this really wouldn't be a hard one for me. It might even, it might even necessitate a trade-up where Bill Belichick says, hey, Bailey Zappi year one and Anthony Richardson year two, and that's how we're going to do this. And Mac Jones, we move for a second round pick. I think there would be some value on the market for uh, Mac Jones as a potential quarterback this year in the draft or even after the draft. So for me, I think it would be a really fascinating pick because Bill Belichick, he's a smart guy. He recognizes what the Eagles did. Shout out to Colleen Wolf. He, he recognizes what the Eagles were able to do with their quarterback and how they brought him along. And I think he understands that's a way to win in the NFL outside of the pocket quarterback he had for years with Tom Brady, the pocket quarterback with Mac Jones. I think he could go in a different direction with uh, the high upside. And I agree with Bucky. I mean, that would be my pick at seven for the Texans, but I gave them Levis because I think they might lean in that direction but Richardson is a high ceiling player even if his floor is a little lower so to me this was the most fun pick of the entire mock draft Lane I have your coffee Lane is there a Lane I have a coffee oh no it's Lance it's Lance oh it's, yeah here you go here it's you a go. chai latte though because of the spice yeah. here uh, Anthony Richardson the the quarterback with the least amount of experience mm. in the position going to a team with a head coach that has the most experience arguably in that position it's a funny match I kind of like it though Bucky what have you seen from Richardson okay so let me do this because I okay. think I've seen this I think I saw this <laughs> in 2021 when the Patriots took Cam Newton and they ran this offense and maybe Bill Belichick is saying I got Cam at the end of his career maybe I want to get a Cam like prospect at the front end so let's look at the tape and see what Anthony Richardson does we talk about big play potential big arm can throw it out the stadium the ability to move around the pocket is certainly there you see him throw off platform you see him make plays as he improvises much like Cam Newton did creativity, being able to throw at different angles, being able to extend plays, run around, make plays to eventually put the ball in the end zone. But this is the part. When we talk about that comparison that people are throwing out there about Anthony Richardson and Cam Newton, it's about the power running style. It's about being able to be a home run hitter with the ball tucked in under that arm. The Patriots got a taste of it. Cam Newton scored double digit touchdowns on the ground for the Patriots and he was a shell of himself. Maybe Bill Belichick is intrigued by that style of offense. Maybe he wants to do it with a younger prospect, though. And that's why Anthony Richardson could be the pick here for the Patriots. One thing you have to do as an organization, you have to do an audit. You have to look at your personnel and start with the quarterback position and say, are we good enough to win a championship with where we are at this position right now? Now, you probably play the game a little differently with Anthony Richardson, but right now you're playing the game the same way that Burrow plays the game, the same way that Herbert plays the game. You talk about, obviously, with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. You're playing that same brand of football with Mac Jones, who's simply not as talented as those guys. You go down this road with Anthony Richardson, you can play a different way. You can create a different formula to compete with those teams and go chase a title. Because when you've been in it and had the success that Bill Belichick has, is the greatest coach this game has ever seen. You know, making the playoffs, having winning records, those things don't mean anything to him. He wants to win Super Bowls, and I don't know if where they are at that position right now, they're good enough to get that done. I just have one question, though, because if Bill Belichick is attracted to that style of play, 
why not make a deal then for Lamar Jackson, who is a known commodity, instead of Richardson with just 13 starts under his belt? You don't know what you're going to get, so it's just all about the money, but they have money. It's about the money because DJ and I talked about this other in the podcast. Like, when you free up the money at the quarterback spot, it allows you to go and get other pieces in place. And so you now can expend the money differently. And so that's why you would like to say Lamar Jackson will be a natural fit if you're going to play this style. But it's cost prohibitive. 40 million plus versus a cheap rookie deal in the first round when you have five years to build out that team, it is more attractive to deal with the rookie quarterback. That's why it's not Richardson versus Lamar Jackson. It's Lamar Jackson versus Richardson and the extra $30 million right. of play money you get to go <laughs> fill out the rest of your roster. That's fair. I've never been good with budgeting money at all. So, uh, okay. Just make more. Let's take a gander at picks in between Levis and Richardson here because Lance has Christian Gonzalez and Lucas Van Ness bringing some relief to the defense in Atlanta and Chicago, followed by Peter Skoronsky going to the Eagles. JSN, the first receiver off the board at 11 to the Titans, then a pair of offensive tackles in Darnell Wright and Broderick Jones go at 12 and 13. So at 15, our first tight end off the board, Dalton Kincaid goes to Green Bay. Yeah, and listen, it, it's you can go in a couple different directions for Green Bay, but this one just really makes a lot of sense. I try to get away from tight end, but it's hard to. You can pick which flavor of tight end that you're looking for. But the Green Bay Packers, you know, when you have a pass-catching tight end, you really have a receiver. You have a pass-catching receiver when you have a pass-catching tight end. Nobody's got better hands than, uh, than Dalton Kincaid, and I think it's a very important position to be good at when you have a young quarterback like Jordan Love. So I like Kincaid here in this spot for the Packers. Okay, then we go to 18, another tight end off the board. It's Michael Mayer going to the Lions. Yeah, Michael Mayer, I know Lions fans hate this. I mean, they hated my whole mock, but it's too bad, so sad, because Michael Mayer <laughs> is a good wide tight end. I get that he's not, he may be grandma sending you some socks for a Christmas present. I get that, but you need socks, and you also need wide tight ends that can block, catch over the middle, and also help your running game take it to the next level. So for me, I like what, what Mayer brings to the table. Is he is he an explosive tight end? No. Is he a sexy pick? No. But he's a necessary player for one team out there, and that lucky team may end up being the Lions. Sounds like you have some things to unpack with Lions fans. Like yeah, we'll do it there. on another time. Explored. Sliding down to the Bucks <laughs> at 19 here, they grab Combine workout warrior Nolan Smith. Yeah, so Levante David, he's out of his contract next year. And I think, you know, for me, Nolan Smith is interesting because he's in the 230 range. So he's not a classic 3-4 end. He's not a classic 4-3 end. He's tough against the run, and he's got some rush potential. Why not put him in a position for a defense where they can he can play off-ball linebacker in early snaps and step down onto the, uh, you know, off the edge and rush the passer on pass rushing down. So I kind of like the hybrid nature of what Nolan Nolan Smith brings to the table here. Love his football character, too. Now, Lance, this one caught my eye at 21. The Chargers draft a burner. Jalen Hyatt to join Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. Yeah, and, you know, this is another one where I think the Chargers in my mock, I, I had about three or four people that I loved in this spot. But when you look at what Justin Herbert can do in terms of his arm talent and throwing down the field, I love the ability of Hyatt, of Hyatt not already only to hit chunk plays down the field and home runs, but to really back safeties off and give the other wide receivers a chance to see easier coverage looks, a chance to really take uh, um, safeties off the line of scrimmage and help out Austin Eckler or whoever the running back is. So what Jalen Hyatt does is not just score touchdowns on explosive plays. He also has an ancillary benefit to the running game and for the other receivers underneath. So I actually thought this was a good schematic fit for the quarterback they have with the Chargers. I like that you're complimenting your own work. I agree with you. I Thanks. think it's a great fit, too. I love that pick by me. Picks 15 to 21. Lance has a pair of tight ends and a pair of edge rushers getting phone calls. And the Chargers end up with Jalen Hyatt for Justin Herbert. Did I hear an ancillary in there? I think so. Yeah, Pretty did. good. Yeah. So nice. Hyatt jumped back into the first round after falling out of your second mock. Why? Uh, you know, it depends on I, – I try to think like the team's doing a lot of instances, and he just happened to be a, a player in a particular spot I liked. Honestly, in my mock pro – as I went down some other teams, I might have given him to the Cowboys. To be honest, I don't think he would have fallen past the Cowboys for me because of what he brings to the table. The problem you have with Jalen Hyatt is that he is a very specific 
scheme specific fit. He is a vertical thread who's going to catch balls underneath because everyone's going to back off of him. So he's going to be a level one and a level three talent. He's not a great run after catch guy underneath, but I do like the fact that he can give Justin Herbert some explosive touchdowns. And in that division against the Chiefs, sometimes you just have to get in shootouts and win the shootouts. And I think a guy that can hit the home runs like Hyatt matters, in, especially in a division like that. Yeah, reuniting with Josh Palmer, another former Tennessee wide out there with the Chargers. And, and I'm with you, Buck. We've talked about this. Yes. Trying to stop the Chiefs is futile. Uh, it's, it's not going to be done, so you better have enough firepower to outscore them. And when you look at this guy, he has 93 octane. He has pure gas. He is running past guys. We're looking at the highlights over and over again. He's five, six, seven yards behind the defense. When you think about the Chargers and how the Chargers have basically been playing half-court basketball, except for when they throw it up to Mike Williams, you now have a field stretcher and Jalen Hyatt. It not only creates space for everyone else in the passing game, but they, maybe now it opens up stuff in the running game so they can control the game in the fourth quarter. Any more trades coming in this thing? I feel like we kind of hit a lull here, Lance. I, don't I mean, know. let's There's let's, still let's plenty have of something time. here. We need a little more juice here to polish this thing up. Well, guess what? You're in luck because we have much more to come here on Mock Draft Live. You know what? The rich, they're getting richer. Uh, Twas ever thus. Find out which Super Bowl contender Lance has trading on up DJ to grab a star running back. Bijan Robinson. Is it the Eagles, Lance? You can tell me if it's the Eagles. It'll be Robinson to the second level and beyond. Touchdown. That's Bijan Robinson out into the open along the sideline. Bijan Robinson to the end zone. What a sweet move. Robinson does it again. At 23, Lance, you've got the Bills trading up with the Vikings and picking Bijan Robinson. Yeah, Vikings need more draft capital, so I'm sure they'd be happy to move back. And for me, this is the equivalent of Buffalo making an all-in trade for a Super Bowl. If you have somebody to take the pressure off of Josh Allen near the, the red zone, which I think would be very valuable for them, and a guy who could help you control games in the fourth quarter once you get the lead, I think that's a tremendous value. So I understand the analytics crowd isn't going to like me picking a back and they're going to hate it even more to give up an additional pick. But I think this is one of those kind of all in picks for for the Bills here. OK, yeah, that's value right there. To me, he's the third best player in the draft. So, you know, to get him at 23 is the definition of a steal. Yeah, it, it's it is interesting because they could probably use some receiver depth, too, because they, they don't no really well. have anyone be behind <laughs> Stefan Diggs um, and Gabe Davis. And uh, they brought in Damian Harris. But Bijan Robinson, is he going to be the guy that gets the Bills to finally start running the ball? Well, I mean, yeah, I think he could. We know how good Josh Allen is, but they were snapping to Josh Allen on third down. They had to try to get first downs with Josh Allen in the playoffs, and he did that. But do you really want to take a chance with a guy as valuable as Josh Allen handling so much of the running duties? I, I don't think so. This is a three-down back who has the ability – either with elusiveness or unbelievable contact power and for so oh, to me this is kind of a no-brainer if he's on the board for buffalo yeah so uh if we do then move on to the jaguars at 24 penn state corner joey porter jr is heading to duval yeah and that's a need for them this is need meets fit meets talent it would be a great pick, I think, for Jacksonville. And, you know, I don't know about you, Bucky, but when I watch Porter, I time I see these long-arm guys that can kind of play in multiple – I think he's a press man corner, but I think he does have the ability to play some – but when you look at how Jacksonville's built and how they're coming up, they understand we've got to beat the Chiefs. And I think having a cornerback that has the length and has the ability to play bigger receivers, that's quite a valuable commodity these days. Yeah, it is a valuable commodity. Put him opposite Tyson Campbell. They now have a nice duo on the outside. Mm, love that. Okay, and now the Cowboys, wait, are they really, they're getting another weapon for Dak. They're drafting a wide receiver here? Well, I mean, look, they need a wide receiver to take some pressure off of C.D. Lamb, and Quentin Johnston has that ability. Now, I think Quentin Johnston has a higher ceiling, lower floor. There's some issues that I have sometime with drops for Quentin Johnston. I think he disappeared in a couple of times, uh, certainly most notably against Georgia, but, I mean, the whole team did. But I, I do think that Quentin Johnston, at his best, is a really fun player to watch. Tremendous run-after-catch talent, and despite what you have him on the 4-4, you know, what he's clocked at, he's a fast football player. So I like the size, I like the length, 
I like the ability to play on all three levels, and I think it really gives CeeDee Lamb a chance to maneuver. And you know what, Lance? I like picks 22 through 26, which we're looking at right now because the Ravens, they trade away Lamar Jackson earlier in the draft, then pick up exactly what Lamar maybe could use of playmaking wide receiver in Zay Flowers. Bijan goes 23rd, followed by two corners. TCU's Quinton Johnston stays in Texas and joins the Cowboys at 26. So the Cowboys, they added Brandon Cooks to their receiver room with CeeDee Lamb there already. Um, so where would you rank their receivers right now if Johnston does join the fold, Lance? Well, I mean, look, Cooks is a good player. He just happens to be on a lot of different teams. I like Michael Gallup just fine. I think losing Dalton Schultz hurts you a little bit. That's something you have to consider because he was a very valuable member of that team as a pass catcher. But I think what Quentin Johnston does for you is he gives you a legitimate vertical guy that's really going to cause defenses some problems. And it's not just, you know, you don't have to be a 4-3-40 guy uh, to, to be a dangerous player. You also have to be somebody who can win the 50-50 balls down the field and that's something he can definitely do he absolutely can win the 50 50 balls you think about this uh wide receiver core and creating a basketball team well now he gives them something they don't have they don't have a true vertical stretch guy michael gallup had filled that role but he may not be the same since his injury you have brandon cooks who can scoot around and make some plays and cd lamb is your number one this is a big body big target vertical stretch playmaker that should help them put more points on the board colleen i'm, I'm anxious to see if there's a fifth gear here uh for lance because he has been revving the engine on this mock <laughs> draft right now i'm just hoping there's a little something left for us here uh -huh. because this has been one surprise and one shake up after another I'm, I'm anxious to see how this thing finishes up that's that's what lance is one big surprise and shake up after another we have plenty more lance has given us so many treats along the way and don't worry guys because we have the final five picks to round out Lance's first round mock here. Lance is giving some love to some new guys. He's been watching the show the last two weeks, and DJ, he said that these two mocks have kind of been a little basic, nice. so he just wanted to switch things up. We'll be back with more after this. We are in the thick of draft season in full swing right here, and our experts deliver comprehensive breakdowns of every major prospect as well as draft needs for all 32 teams. Get to know the next class of NFL stars. It's Path to the Draft weekdays at 6 p.m. Eastern, only on NFL Network. <laughs> Guess what, guys? It's time for Mach 1. We're seeing these names for the first time on Mock Draft Live. At 27, Ooh. linebacker Drew Sanders heads to Arkansas, from Arkansas to Minnesota. Yeah, he can play inside. He can rush off the edge. He's long. He's got the ability to uh, to really hit. He's got good technique. He's still learning the position a little bit, but 100 tackles, 13 and a half sacks, and 9 and a half tackles for losses in his first year as an inside linebacker. That's serious, serious production. Oof. Well, at 28, a third tight end goes in the first round. Luke Musgrave heads to the Bengals. This tight end class is something else. Yeah, Bengals fans want the 285-pound defensive tackle, and I put him in Kalijah Kansi. I put him in my first mock. I like him there as well. But, you know, Joe Burrow throwing another tight end in there is not the worst thing in the world, and this guy, I think, can help the running game and the passing game. DJ knows I'm a fan of Musgraves. Mm -hmm. Well, then the 30th pick, the Eagles, they take edge rusher Keon White out of Georgia Tech, Lance. Now, Keon White to me is intriguing specifically for uh, the Eagles because he can play inside in Fletcher Cox's position or he can play outside. He has this rare size athleticism combination that really allows him to play all over the place. Athletically, he's not going to be outflanked on the edge. And yet from a size strength standpoint, he can handle the business inside as well. So I think he's a uniquely talented player and a uniquely suited player for a more hybrid defense like like the Eagles can run with a guy like Keon White. And we know the Eagles like to sink resources into their front lines, especially the defensive line. So closing out the first round at 31, the champs select receiver Cedric Tillman to join Patrick Mahomes in the host city of the draft. Yeah, so Cedric Tillman, I think there's a lot of people sleeping on Tillman, but you wouldn't if you watched 2021. He was so good. He he had a high ankle sprain in the third game of the year against Akron, had surgery just so he could get out there and play with his teammates this year. So he was never 100%. His numbers are not going to jump out at you. But in 2021, he put 200 on Georgia on 10 catches. He put 152 on Alabama. I mean, what do you want? This guy is a really big, talented wide receiver. 
That's scary to think about in that offense. So let's reset, take a look at the last few picks of Lance's mock. The Vikings trade down for Drew Sanders and the Bengals pick up a tight end. Then Kalaje Kansi heads to New Orleans and Keon White makes his way to Philly with Cedric Tillman landing the final spot on night one in Kansas City. So Lance, the Chiefs history taking receivers in right. the first round, it's not great. We know about that. So tell me what they will be getting in Cedric Tillman. Well, I think with Cedric Tillman, what they get is a big target that they can truly rely on. And, and this is something that they need. They had Juju Smith-Schuster for a year. What you get with, with Cedric Tillman is a highly competitive player. As I mentioned before, a player who came back from injury because football is that important to him. I think he gives you a one, two, and three level wide receiving target. He's not the fastest guy, but he's fast enough. But he is a hyper competitive player ball winning player and he has had his best game as I mentioned against the two teams that played in the national championship in 2021 so what they get I think is a guy who's not a flash player really like the latest Sky Moore or or, or a player who just you know shoots up late in the draft process to me his 2021 tape really shows a player who frankly I think has as much talent as any wide receiver in the 2023 draft. So that's something to keep an eye on because that 2021 was really special. It was, it was. And I want to talk about another pass catcher here because, DJ, I know you love this tight end class specifically, but we haven't talked about Luke Musgrave on this show yet. So what do you think about him catching passes from Joe Burrow, blocking for Joe Burrow? Well, I, I like it. I don't think anybody else in the, in the AFC would really like it yeah. because he's so talented. He's big, he's fast. He's somebody that we got to see down at the Senior Bowl, and he just has a different gear. He can get down the seam. He's competitive as a blocker. You see only two games this year because of injury. If he had a chance to play the full slate, I think he'd be a slam dunk first-round pick. So I have no problems whatsoever with him going around number one. All right. Well, I always wonder about tight ends, especially rookie tight ends, how quickly they'll make the transition. It takes a minute. It takes a minute, but right. just be patient. It's going to be worth the payoff. Here. Okay, all right. I like that. I like that for the Bengals. You know, guys, we have not forgotten about the Rams, the Dolphins, the Broncos, Browns, Niners. Don't worry. Up next, we're diving into the teams with no first-round picks. Who should they target when they're finally on the clock? JSN, along with all of the other wide receivers and players in this draft class, will find out soon enough where they're headed coming up in less than a month's time. But here's a look at all of Lance's first round wide receivers here. JSN was the first of five to go in the first round. But I did notice no Jordan mm -hmm. Addison on the list. He didn't get his invite. It's still in the mail. What's the problem? No love for Jordan Addison, Lance? No, I've got some love for him. It's just, as you'll notice, these this is a this is a wide receiver class that has very specific traits. And at the back end, you saw some guys with size. I think Addison's a good player. I think Josh Downs is a really good player from North Carolina as well. I think those two guys are going to be good pros. I just happen to think they're going to be left just outside of the first round and be very valuable picks early in the second round. So um, I like, I certainly like Jordan Addison. I just think he could get edged out by bigger receivers later in the first round. Okay, and now I did tease it before, so I want to pay this off. Let's get into some of the teams a little out of sight, out of mind on night one, the teams that don't have a first round pick. We got the Dolphins, uh, they pick in the second round, Broncos, Browns, Niners, uh, everybody's waiting until the third there. The Rams also pick in the second round too. So what should those, two, those teams do? Lance, you want to start us off here with the Dolphins? Let me start you with the Dolphins. And look, they have Derm Smythe right now at, at tight end. He's all right, but I'm trying to get better at that position. You have Mike he's <laughs> a playmaker in the red zone. I'm looking at Luke Schoonmaker and, and draft tight end. Now, I don't know if I'm there, but the tight end position for me is a sneaky position when you have two smaller, quicker uh, wideouts. The roster need a bigger, taller uh, threat and a guy who can catch the pass and uh, you know around the red zone but also help you in the blocking game and I think that's tight end Luke Schoonmaker out of Michigan if you want to get really specific about it but tight end yeah, to me to would me, be a good pick here to me I like that call there Lance when I look at the 49ers they have 99 101 102 they need a right tackle obviously they lose McGlinchey in free agency so that would be an area I think they address with one of those three picks all right there in a row to me there's some interesting names there Blake Freeland from BYU would be one I would consider 
No, I'm thinking about the LA Rams, and I'm going to go with another pass rusher. How about Will McDonald from Iowa State? You talk about a high-energy, versatile pass rusher that has a knack for getting to the quarterback. We don't know how much longer Aaron Donald is going to play, but we want to make sure that we beef up this team the right way to ensure that they're able to hunt quarterbacks, knock them down, and that will give them a chance to play great defense in this league. Mm -hmm. Love that. I mean, you know what, Lance? You did a fantastic job on this draft, and maybe people on Twitter aren't going to tell you that, but this was fun. There was a lot of surprises, a couple landmines here and there. You're not expecting a lot of these different things. Um, <laughs> what Lance? kind of a mock was that? Yeah. That's from his no, son. No, my nice. son is going in on my mock. Nice. Oh, you know what? That's what families do. That's what families are for. I'll be honest. I thought he was kind of uh, was kind of nice there with that comment. I bet she's got a little bit worse than that on the old. Oh, social it got scene. it got worse. And that's a picture of him, him eating Brussels sprouts when he was nine years old. And someone already on Twitter said, "Is that the face he made when he read your mock?" <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> pretty that's that's not bad. Pretty much. Well, maybe we'll have to uh, invite your son in here to judge your next mock next time. You know, if not this <laughs> He'd year. Love it. Maybe next year, but we do have another mock it's coming good work. next week. That's good Lance, work, Lance. Great good stuff. Work, buddy. Miss you, buddy. <laughs> Wish you could be in studio with us, but next week we'll have Rhett Lewis oh. in here for oh, his my. first oh, mock draft. Um, Lance, I'm sure you can give him some advice ahead of time as well. Um, but it's going to be fun, guys. You excited? I can't believe they're still letting Rhett do this. Yeah, I Rhett. thought last year that that was it. Yeah. I can't believe Rhett wants to do <laughs> this anymore. Incredible. Not with DJ in the middle square there. Well, you guys have been fantastic. Tons of fun. We'll do it again next week. Bye, Lance.